Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm your football nerd, Brandon Perna. And the preseason, it's over. All the big time rookie quarterbacks have been named starters. Young, Stroud, Richardson. No sitting behind the seasoned vets that those teams don't really have. While that may not be big news today, I wanna break down who I think the biggest winners and losers of the NFL preseason were as it concludes and as we brace for real football September 7th. Or as I think of it, the day Jesus invented America. Let's roll! Wait, that's good sports! My first winner, at Young Mantis 2 who dropped the funniest video I've seen in a bit on Twitter. Just spotted an Indianapolis Colts quarterback. Holy shit, it's Peyton Manning. Now Anthony Richardson is a massive winner. Of all the rookie quarterbacks, I think football fans are the most excited to watch him play, and he will be the best uh, rookie quarterback this year, and possibly for the next couple years, which is why this one stings. Losers? Colts. The Colts drafted the quarterback who most believe will make the biggest immediate impact. They're unequivocally the one team that can overpay their running back right now without issue. Instead, they watched both Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs return to their respective teams for slight raises, all while they continue to try and most likely will trade the guy who could be the most important piece to the successful development of Anthony Richardson in Jonathan Taylor. If Jim Irsay still has some sanity left. He will offer Jonathan Taylor the same 20 million he was going to pay to keep that fucking orca alive. Winner, Kareem Hunt, who suddenly will become very desirable after the Colts trade away Jonathan Taylor. Honestly, the single biggest loser of this entire offseason is Skip Bayless. His new show debuted on FS1 with his new co-hosts, Michael Irvin, Richard Sherman, and Keyshawn Johnson. Catch it with your hands, catch it with your body. How you don't tell it? me that's the worst advice? I'm probably I'm only one of the best to ever do it at playing that what game. What I'm saying I, is, you, I don't know how you, you can tell say me catch it advice. with your body and, all and not your hands. This is what it looks like when you have too many loud personalities in the same room. I don't know how you're gonna stay as bad as- It's not often you see Skip Bayless not able to get a word in. That bad advice. Because if you're telling kids to catch with their body and not no, their no, hands, you gotta you, listen you, to what he's saying. Wait, no, no, no. Thank I you, kid. What he's saying. A big loser in the preseason, age and Matthew Stafford. Not only do the Rams look like they have no depth on their team, apparently Stafford is getting too old to relate to his teammates. Now this nugget came from Kelly Stafford's podcast, The Morning After, and this is one of those things Stafford probably told her in confidence and really didn't want her to talk about on the podcast, but apparently he relayed to her that he was struggling to connect with his teammates. He said, I don't know how to lead people I have no connection with. I have to somehow find a way to connect with them. But now they get out of practice and meetings during training camp and they go straight to their phones. No one looks up from their phones. Matthew's like, am I the dad here? Do I take away their phones? What do I do? Well, Matt, have you tried offering them drugs and alcohol? That's, that's how adults make friends. Anyway, the worst part for Stafford is that when he asked rookie quarterback Stetson Bennett for advice about connecting with younger players, Stetson said, I don't know, dude. I was uh, helping tear down the Berlin Wall when you were a baby. Winner, Aaron Rodgers, who is older than Matthew Stafford and also seems to have no trouble connecting with the youth. He tossed this vintage Aaron Rodgers touchdown to Garrett Wilson in Rodgers' first preseason action in several years. Now Rodgers has been like a wise sage since landing with the Jets. I'm starting to buy into it and the Jets are probably ready to kick some serious ass this season. Hey, if you're a $20 monthly YouTube or Patreon member, please join the ESPN Fantasy Leagues. We have just a few spots left. That info is on the community tab here on YouTube or on Patreon. The drafts start Friday and this Saturday. And if you're giving me $20 a month and you're not playing in one of the Fantasy Leagues, why? Why are you giving me that money? I do have shout outs for new Patreons. Alex Lopez, 
Tegan Shirley, Zachary Walker, Jerome, Nick Bolton Fan Club, Colby Inn, and Vishnu Sleep. And the Patreon YouTube member uh, Zoom Hangout is Wednesday. That info also in those places. Winners? My Denver Broncos. A team that looked just a little bit better every single week through preseason. Russell Wilson was pulled early in week two because he and the offense were clicking. Now that came a week after Sean Payton left the starters out there twice as long as expected. Uh, injuries to the wide receiver group have sucked, I do admit that. But they found a legit RB3 in Jaleel McLaughlin, who could be a home run hitter for this offense, a much needed asset considering they didn't break a 20 yard rush last year until midway through the season. Javante Williams defied medical science and will be ready to rock week one this season. However, losers! My Broncos defense after corner Kwan Williams had to get ankle surgery today. At the very least, he's going to miss eight weeks. And there's a chance, depending on the severity of the injury and how the surgery goes, he could be put on IR and miss the full year. Last year, he played half the season with a club on his surgically repaired hand. Uh, I guess he can't do that with feet. Every time I start to feel good about this team, they suffer another massive injury. And I'm starting to get very scared that the Broncos are better, that they are going to be better, but keep losing games because every team in the division looks better and because the Broncos are gonna be the one team that loses the war with injuries again. The good news is the man who will fill in for Kwan Williams, Isang Bassey just had a very solid preseason with a pick in every game. Another winner, the Cardinals. They are tanking. They are very clearly tanking, and they're gonna get away with it. The NFL doesn't care. And while tanking is not a good look in the NFL, it's not as bad of a look as Kyler Murray in a sports bra. We all know their plan is to control the 2024 NFL draft with their probable first overall pick and the Texans first round pick. After trading former eighth overall pick Isaiah Simmons to the Giants for just a seventh rounder, it's clear they are going to strip down to nothing by the end of the season. Losers? Every poor soul who is talented and still has to play for the Cardinals this season. They just traded for QB Josh Dobbs. Rest in peace. Colt McCoy, if he starts at the quarterback uh, position this season, rest in peace. Oh, never mind, Colt. You're a winner. You've been released. I'm sure this is how you're hearing about getting released from AZ. And poor Josh Dobbs now has 14 days to maybe be a starter. Or Clayton Toon. I don't know, but this tank is working. James Conner is like, I beat cancer for this shit? And nobody is getting screwed harder than safety Buda Baker. While you can't control Kyler Murray's injury, it's a terrible look if the best player on your entire team after that is indeed a safety. Even Cards fans are rooting for him to get traded to free Buda. I bet he is traded in season though, shortly before the trade deadline. Possibly the Eagles, which truly would be Nirvana for Buda, wouldn't it? Watching all of this happen, why on earth would Kyler Murray make any effort to return this season? Another winner, Jordan Love. Uh, I still don't know how good Jordan Love is or will be, but all he had to do this preseason was come out and show that he's not a lost soul out there. And he did more than that. The Packers missing the postseason last year also helps him a lot because if he gets them into the playoffs, it is a huge win for Green Bay. The Eagles may have found a stud in safety Sidney Brown, uh, the third round pick got a good amount of work in this preseason and didn't allow a single reception and racked up 13 tackles. Now, he was only thrown out once, but maybe that's because his coverage was just that good. Jimmy Graham, winner, he returned to the field this week, made a nice catch after having a seizure and getting arrested a little over a week ago. That's right, Jimmy Graham was having a seizure and the cops showed up and were like, arrest him. Okay, that's not exactly how it happened, but after a scary medical episode, it's really positive seeing Jimmy Graham back out on the field making plays in a Saints uniform where he started his career. Now, in terms of his arrest, he was apparently disoriented after a medical episode, later said to be a seizure. He was running from hotel security where the Saints were staying before the cops chased him down. Seizure or not, whichever cop caught Jimmy Graham needs a raise. Loser, doctors. Now I'm not a doctor, but if a man had a seizure, I'm not sure he should be playing in a preseason football game a week later. I feel like risking a brain injury after that is a uh, bad medical practice. 
Winner, Trey Lance. Trey Lance asked for a trade and the 49ers granted him one. I am thrilled Trey will get a fresh start and I am rooting for him to get a real chance at some point in the league. Losers though, uh, the 49ers and the Cowboys. Jerry Jones, just by trading for Trey Lance, brings unwanted doubt from the outside world to be placed on Dak Prescott, something he doesn't need more of. The 49ers obviously admit that they fucked up the 2021 draft by trading three firsts to get Trey Lance. Ultimately, they are fine though, as long as Brock Purdy is the truth, and I think he is, and a fourth rounder is more than I thought they would get for Trey Lance. Regardless, it's a dumb look for the 49ers, it's a what the fuck look for the Cowboys, and I'll just try and root for Trey Lance here. Winner, the Seattle Seahawks and standout ball catcher Jake Bobo. I have mentioned Jake Bobo. Every preseason recap this, uh, this year, and Drew Locke dished Jake Bobo, another beautiful touchdown. Look, Jig Bobo can come in and fill the spot that Jackson Smith and Jigba was supposed to be taking while he recovers from his wrist injury. Win-win for Seattle. Uh, and for all the Seahawks fans telling me to cry about how good Drew Locke is, let me show you this drop pick six he threw. If this were a regular season game, that's a touchdown, guys. Drew has all the arm talent in the world, but he will never stop doing that. Losers! Football fans watching a professional broadcast, all so we can learn this. And AJ Dillon putting his foot in the ground just like you're supposed to do. Wait, really? They're, they're, football players are supposed to put their, their feet on the ground? Next, wait, next you're gonna tell me that they should be putting one leg in front of the other and then moving those legs faster and faster and faster to form a sprint. Is that it? Winners, the Steelers and Kenny Pickett, finishing the preseason with the highest grade from Pro Football Focus in the league. Now, reminder, we love Pro Football Focus grades when they support the guy we like. Now, in terms of exceeding expectations, I don't think any team did that the way the Steelers offense did. Name one part of their offense from the preseason that looked worse from 2022. You can't. Every area looks improved, and that's all you can ask for at this point. Quarterback progression, check. George Pickens poised for a breakout year, check. Uh, Deontay Johnson holding onto the football. The offensive line opening up running lanes. I've got one word for Steelers fans. Ganta. Winners, Jaguars. It wasn't just that Nathan Rourke gave us a couple insane highlights, but every quarterback when they were out there for the Jags played pretty well. CJ beat hard, a little up and down, but I am bullish on Dougie P in year two with Trevor Lawrence and a bunch of weapons. Plus Calvin Ridley made a catch that has us all feeling like he's gonna go off this season. Winners, the Browns. I just think this is a team that has an incredibly solid roster top to bottom. I've said it a hundred times. My gut is telling me Deshaun Watson will be good this year. The Browns defensive front gonna cause problems for opposing offenses. Miles Garrett is a perennial top three edge rusher. Dalvin Tomlinson in the middle is a beast. Shelby Harris, a late ad, is one of my favorite defensive linemen in the league. And say what you want, but when he turns it on, Zadarius Smith is pretty good. Not to mention they still got JOK over there. They remind me of the Steelers up front. They are going to be physical and win a lot of battles in the trenches and wear opponents down. The AFC North North is gonna be a bloodbath. The winner of that division is whatever team manages to stay healthy. So not the Ravens. Loser, Browns kicker Cade York, who was cut. Cade unfortunately shared highlights of himself making field goals against the Eagles at halftime of that game. Remember, Cade York boomed a 58 yard game winner week one last year against the Panthers. Turns out he shared a highlight of that kick mid kick. And he struggled after that last year, and now he's got to find a new team. Winner, Aiden O'Connell and the freaking Raiders. I hope I'm wrong, but Aiden O'Connell will win the Raiders a Super Bowl this decade. Nobody finished the preseason with a higher passer rating than one Aiden O'Connell. And now Josh Jacobs has officially returned on a very reasonable $12 million deal for this season. Plus, he seems excited. Changing his jersey number to eight, the Raiders are trending up. But here's the caveat. If Josh McDaniels is too stupid to not move Aiden O'Connell, the number two on the depth chart ahead of Brian Hoyer, you guys are screwed. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports, winners and losers of the preseason. Uh, come back when Jonathan Taylor is traded and I gotta make another freaking video about that.